What's good, King Gonda? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another collaboration. Today, I am uh, just so happy to bring on uh, a, a great guest. I've been looking to bring him on uh, for many years. He's one of the most talented um, PhD professional academics um, in Black America uh, and making noise on YouTube. I will let him introduce himself and uh, what his channel is about. Well, well thank you, uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Uh, it, it's a, a pleasure and a privilege to be here, man. We've been talking about this for quite some time, so I'm happy that we were able to make uh, this happen. Um, but to get you know straight to it, man, uh, you know I'm a scholar, professional academic uh, here in North Carolina. Um, I don't uh, outline my my vita or my resume uh, because what I do is kind of it's independent. What I do um, is my own thing, apart from the institution that I work at. Um, but I will say this: my channel is about Black men's empowerment, mm -hmm. and and I deal with um, the issues. Um, and, and the crises that confront black men, men on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, and I deal with the fact that, you know, we have not had voices um, to to speak on our behalf, to talk about the challenges that we have, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of employment, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the criminal justice system, in terms mm -hmm. of just, you know, our, our well-being, our mental health, happiness, mm -hmm. you know, so on and so forth, man. My channel is about empowering black men, educating black men, helping mm -hmm. black men to optimize themselves, to be um, the best the best version of, of themselves, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also to to do commentary, man. So I do a lot of commentary on what's going on in America in terms of politics, mm -hmm. Democrat, Democrats, Republicans, third party mm -hmm. people, et cetera, et cetera. I came on YouTube officially in 2020 during the pandemic, during the 2020 election, Biden and Trump. Uh, and I had a lot to say about that moment, man. So I've been mm -hmm. here since since 2020, man, going on three years, man. And mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I'm not stopping. All right. So this is Dr. Ronald Neal, PhD. And uh, we're glad to have him here on the Ken Gonda channel. I wanted to bring uh, more of our academics here to, to give us a, a wider scope of what's going on. Um, and, and the reason why um, I, I've been talking to Dr. Ronald, he'll, he'll be on his way to East Africa very soon. But not just that, Dr. Ronald Neal has been um, visiting many places in Africa over the last year. I believe that he was in Senegal and Gambia. And we made an episode uh, about how uh, so a lot of these European white women are taking advantage of African brothers over in uh, in West Africa, and it, and it kind of correlates because the, Dr. Ronald Neal, and you know me me myself also I, I focus on the, the issues that Black men are facing. Uh, but Dr. Dr. Neal, um, let, let's kind of talk about um, what you see that that is relatable for the Black men that you're seeing in 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 America, and in the subjugation that you're seeing from some of these African men, especially in Nagami and the Senegal when you were there. What what correlations were you able to, to to deduce from those things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I tell you, man. So um, I've been to that part of Africa, West Africa, the the, the Senegal Gambia region, um, three times over the last uh, man nine months. You know, okay. I, I took my first trip to Senegal um, this time last year, you know, uh, just, you know, next week would be one year. I took my first trip to uh, Senegal, spent two weeks there. Um, first week I was there with a group of, uh, of academics um, dealing with, you know, cultural and political issues uh, in, and religious issues uh, in, in Dakar uh, in particular. And then the next week I stayed and just kind of explored uh, Dakar for myself. And, and I loved it so much. It was such a great experience, man. I went to Gori Island. Um, I met a lot of, you know, Islamic people, Islamic families, and made great connections, food, entertainment, culture, so on and so forth, man. It was so impactful that when I got back to the U.S., man, I went ahead and booked um, uh, another trip to, uh, to Senegal. And so what I did was I booked a trip for the month, the month of September. 
and uh, and I st- I stayed in Senegal for a little over a month from September to like the second week of October and uh in the car in particular and uh and while I was there uh, I decided to take uh, a week long trip to the Gambia for the mm-hmm. first time mm-hmm. and uh and so uh so that's that's what I did uh and and what happened I, so see here's what happened so during the month my month in Senegal, I had the good fortune, man, to go to this Muslim festival festival okay. in a city called Tuba. It's called Tuba. So every year mm-hmm. they have this an, annual event called the Magda de Tuba. And so Tuba is a very, you know, uh, important place, uh, you know, in that country. It has a lot of history. There was a, you know, a, a, an imam there who... Um, you know, became legendary, you know, like a hundred years ago. He was one of these guys who was very resistant towards the French and colonialism and all that. And he kind of created this kind of enclave of resistance, um, you know, for Muslims and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, man, I went to this, I went to this event, man, and, I, and I'm going to tell you what happened. So mm-hmm. um, I'm traveling with these families um, and, and what I noticed uh, as I'm traveling, you know the, the long roads. You know, I mean, you're 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 on the continent. You know how it is, man. You're traveling by car and what have you, man. You're out there uh, in the middle of nowhere, and right. uh, and I see all these guys, and we're driving their buses. Here's the thing, man. I'm seeing guys. I'm seeing these huge, these huge trucks full of young black men. Just huge trucks, young black men. All of them, seemingly, they're like under the age of thirty, right? And, um, and and they're like hanging all off the trucks, man. No women, anything. Uh, and at the same time, on the side of the road, walking, I'm seeing young men just walking and walking and walking and walking. And I was just, I was just captivated by it, man. And um, and I and I and I asked um, the people who I was with, you know, what was going on and what have you, and, and, and who are these young men? Because what I had noticed when I was in the car, I noticed that. You know, there were a lot of young men who were who are not working. Um, you know, these guys were just, you know, they were just out in the streets or what have you, um, you know, living hand to mouth. And mm-hmm. uh, and so what I, I found out uh, is that, you know, in, in Senegal in particular, um, you know, there's a there's a real problem. There's a real problem in terms of, you know, black men, young men in particular in unemployment. Um, there's a problem in terms of um, education. There's not a great, not an effort there to educate these guys and to get these guys skilled and what have mm-hmm. you. Um, and when I went to this, when I went to this festival, um, it just, it was just pronounced, man, because I just saw, I mean, I saw droves and droves of guys either on these, um, on these, uh, on these trucks, on these buses, mm-hmm. or they were walking mm-hmm. along the side of the road just by themselves. And, uh, and I also, you know, I was just learning a lot about the dynamics of the culture and what men do in the culture and stuff. And, um, and so it, it just struck me. And then while I was there, so it was a, it was a three day event. I wind up spending two days there, man. And, uh, and this particular religious event is, it's a kind of a, a, an event. It's, it's, you know, people cook food, they kill goats, they kill camel, they, they 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 do all type of sacrifices. They they just it, it's just cooking, cooking galore, right? So just imagine you're in this you're in this city and, and people are cooking and we're going through all sorts of rituals of prayer and all that, and uh, and, and people are allowed. So during this moment, this, this this religious event, you know, you're able to walk from house to house. Like if you're hungry, if you're hungry, if you're poor, you can just walk into somebody's house and tell them that you're hungry, that you don't have any food. And they will let you in or whatever, and they'll give you food, right? Wow. And, and I saw a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys were going from house to house, getting food and what have you. Um, and I'm going to tell you, um, at nighttime, the night before I left, I went downtown to the, the area where they have all of the festivities. And I have my, my video camera and everything. And, uh, and I saw a lot of these young men. And I was accompanied by some other guys with me. Um, and, 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 and these guys were engaged in, you know, they, they had their music and they had their rituals and, um, I, I'm, I, for, for lack of a better phraseology, man, you know, they, they were involved in some real serious religious type 
rituals. It was kind of like a Pentecostal service. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where, where people they weren't speaking in tongues nothing like that, but mm-hmm. <laughs> but they were they were caught up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With the drums and the music, and it was mm-hmm. driven by the men. You know. Okay. And uh, but the thing was that these these were just poor, disenfranchised Senegalese males. Okay. 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 And uh, at this place, and just um, I guess it was you know it was getting the relief and there, there are women there young girls young women there and everything like that man and it got me thinking about the situation that was going on in Senegal so fast forward mm-hmm. the following week I took mm-hmm. a trip to Gambia okay and for a week for a week for, for a week long visit and I was in the center the tourist center Senegambia and everything and uh and when I got to Senegambia um, you know, after I, I checked in, I had my Airbnb and everything, man. And, and I went went into the restaurant areas and and I noticed in the restaurant areas, same dynamic. Lots of men uh, on the side of the road trying to sell things, trying to hook up with tourists, give them, uh, you know, uh, packages for, for, for you know, uh, trips and, and and whatever whatever the type of needs that they think that the tourists you know might have or what have you. right right and i'm gonna tell you man i went to a restaurant i went to a restaurant man my first night i was hungry and i went to this restaurant man and uh and it was probably maybe seven o'clock at night man and i walked up in the restaurant and, and most of the patrons were white and they were white females so i'm sitting in this restaurant area and there's a bunch of white women older european white women and, and there's a band that's playing and, and the band is primarily male okay and uh and all these women are sitting there and they're eating and the band is playing and some of the women start to get up and they start to dancing and like out of nowhere i see these young black guys just get up and start dancing with these white women okay and uh, from from the you know side of the road and what have you, man. And I have my camera. I have my camera. I have my my uh, my phone. And, uh, and I tried to sneak. You know, I snuck a picture and everything. Uh-huh. Um, I thought I thought about posting it, but I said, man, I, I'm not going to post it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to post yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But I just watched it, man. And I'm looking. I'm saying, there are no white men here. Mm-hmm. There are no white men here, man. They're just these old women who are like, you know. I would say in their 60s and in their 70s and everything, and and I'm like, oh man, you know, this 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 is what I saw on the internet. I mean, this is the the stuff that people have been talking about in terms of the Gambia and what's going on with the young men, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm just sitting back and and, and glued to it and, and don't say i'm just studying man like i'm a scholar right. man so i'm just looking at all the dynamics man and uh and i'm saying okay this is what's going on so what i'm gonna tell you so i went and i left and and i came i went out the next day and same strip and everything and i would walk up and down the strip man and i would see white women older white women uh with these young black men I mean, again, I'm talking about significantly older white women. I mean, women who like, they were like, again, post 60, you know, 60, 70 years old. Wow. And I'm seeing these young guys, man, these young guys who look like soccer players, football players, you know, uh, in Africa, whatever, you know, in in the U.S., you know, we we would, uh, they, they look like defensive backs. Okay, so just okay. imagine, man, you got a black guy who has to, who has the build of like a deep, like a you know, remember a Richard Sherman who played for yeah uh, the, Seahawks. the Seahawks. So you got guys who look like him, man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And they walking around with these seventy year old women mm-hmm. holding their hands and everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I went to the beach. Uh, and I walk on the beach, Kaloli Beach, and I saw the same thing, man. Just, just mm-hmm. the guys with the women, and I would walk towards the resorts and everything. And I was, they have a whole bunch of resorts there, and they mm-hmm. got resorts that damn near cater exclusively to Europeans. You know, mm-hmm. just nothing but white people. You walk to the resort, 
and you're out there in the uh, uh, the sun tanning area where they got the 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 the, the, the carts and everything, and it's just just white people all over the place. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And uh, and you got the dudes out there. You got guys selling cigarettes. You got the guys selling the marijuana. You got the guys they selling everything out there. Everything. You know what I mean? It's just just Africa. You know what I mean? Um, uh, but but it, but it, but it, it it occurred to me, man, that. Um, that that there was something deeper that was happening in the in the culture beyond um, um, just the the surface level thing what we call you know kind of sex tur- tourism or whatever. And I'm gonna mm-hmm. tell you what happened, man. So I got together. I went and took me a I took a you know a, 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 a tour, you know, a Gambia, and I hooked up with a with an African guy. Um, who lives there, native guy, or whatever, and, uh, and and he took me around the city and went to the ports and to the markets and everything, and he was just explaining to me what was going on, and, and and I saw more, you know, I saw more men out, you know, and I got to talking, asking him, I said, you know, what's going on, man? I see these young guys here, man, and um, you know, I said, why, you know, what's happening with the employment situation here, man? What's what's happening? I mean, does the government really, is the government trying to do anything with these guys? And he was like, he was like, no. He said, you know, you have a lot of guys in Gambia, they're just unemployed. They're unemployed. Uh, they can't get married. They can't form families. I met guys in Gambia um, who are not necessarily into the, 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 the woman thing and selling themselves, but you know, these guys were young and um, you know, when I would talk to them about family and stuff like that, it was like, you know, I don't have any money and mm. I don't have any resources. And so, you know, in order for a man to get married here and have a real life and have a stable existence, man, you got to have some money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and it's clear, you know, Gambi has a very interesting history in terms, you know, they just had, you know, they, they are just transitioning from a long era of dictatorship you know right. and uh they had this Jama. guy Jama. yeah he was there for yeah. a long time and, uh, and so now it's, it's more it's seemingly democratic and liberal and what have you and uh but they're still they're still dealing with the economic issues that are there man and and, and you can see it in the men let me let me ask you a question because uh i know you primarily deal with um, the disenfranchisement of black men in in, in America. You were, you're an expert on that as, as well as Dr. Tiasan Johnson. And I know you were not there for so long, but if you have a lot of disenfranchised men in the mm-hmm. society, what, and we know how African-American women have voiced their opinion on what's going on with black men in America. But I, I, I'm curious to know, what do women in Gambia think of these men who are disenfranchised mm-hmm. Have you were you able to ask that question to see what the the response is? Absolutely, absolutely. They they, they don't see those guys as viable. Okay. Yeah, they don't see those guys as viable, man. You know, um, and um, and I would say, you know, kind of for good reasons, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, especially if you have the women who are who might be conservative, conservative Muslim, or what have you. Uh, and they believe in family, you know, and having a household and everything like that. Uh, you know, they're not inclined, you know, to deal with those guys. You know what I mean? And 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 they, you know, they they stay away from them. You know what I mean? Because they just those guys are not they're not empowered like that. And so what happens? And, and here's what the, the tourist dynamic comes in. That man, you know, you got the Europeans coming in, you got the Germans coming in. You got the, uh, the the folks from the 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 the, the, uh, the UK coming in. You got the Norwegians who were there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have men from all over the world who are coming there. You know what I mean? And you know, presenting them presenting themselves as opportunities. You know what I mean? You know, for these women or what have you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it's unsurprising. You know, if you, you you're traveling through Gambia, man, and you see. You know, you see these white men, um, you know, with these Gambian women, you know what I mean? And you see biracial babies and, and that sort of thing, you know, um, you know, for those who are able to secure that type of situation. Um, mm-hmm. But for a lot of the other women, man, they're single. So you have mm-hmm. you have the women who are single um, mm-hmm. and they live at home 
And in, in light of the culture, man, you don't, def- what if, how the females, how, how they live, it's like, you stay at home until you get married. You know? Right, and right. Yeah, you, I mean, it's just, I guess, basically all over Africa. But um, you stay at home on the compound with your family until some man marries you and you start your own home. You know what I mean? So, you know, you can have women out, you know, women who are, you know, from in the early 20s to their late 30s to, you know, I'm sorry, to their, to their late 20s to their early 30s, still at home, unmarried or what have you, um, you know, kind of because of that dynamic and, um, you know, and, and, you know, the other women, and, and here's the thing. Marriage is still a big deal, so people are still getting married. So you still find here's and that's the interesting thing. Interesting thing. You know, you go on, you go on Gamp, and you can still you still find people getting married at at twenty, at twenty two, even eighteen, and what have you. For, forming families. I met, you know, um, you know, women, you know, who were in who were under the age of twenty five, who were married, mm-hmm. one, two, mm-hmm. three kids, and what have mm-hmm. you, living with mm-hmm. their husbands. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a very real, that's, that's a very, very real thing. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? But there is a real problem with men and economic enfranchisement. And, and it looks like, and the thing is, man, it, a lot of that stuff looks similar to what we see with black men in America. Let me, let me talk about that. Can you talk about this? It, it looks similar. In what way does it look similar? Yeah. Unemployment, so it's like you know, you got guys, man, you know, living from you know, hand to mouth, you know. I mean, and, and they've got their own little crime scene, you know, uh, you know, there as in other parts of Africa, all over the world, okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, what are unemployed if you're unemployed, you can't get up, you can't get stable income jobs and what have you, man. The all the immediate alternative is to engage in nefarious activity you know what i mean and, and, and the crimes and stuff like that you know what i mean and you got you know um you, you, you see that element right there you know what i mean and uh and you know uh the tourists are vulnerable to that um other gambians are vulnerable to that um uh, other migrants are vulnerable to the, vulnerable to that because you have a nigerian population there um, that's doing a lot. Um, you have uh, people from the Sierra Leone who are there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you have African Americans who have relocated. You got mm-hmm. the Caribbeans who have relocated. You got your mm-hmm. Brits who have relocated. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, uh, you know, everybody is fair game. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's not just kind of regular street crime. You got scams mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, how, how we say in the States, they, they get it how they live, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the real thing, man. And, and, so, and so the disturbing thing, man, for me was, you know, I- I- engaging the territory, man, and, um, you know, and just seeing men um, on corners, um, you know, seeing men, um, you know, during work hours, not really doing anything, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, or you know, and again at the, at night, you know, you got the guys at night during the tourist areas, you know, hustling and, and trying to to scrap, you know, to 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 live, you know, stake out an existence, man. And so um, it's a it's a it's a real thing. Um, the, the sense I got while in Gambia is that mm-hmm. they haven't gotten to the point where. You know, I mean, you're from California, man. So you, I mean, you understand. And you know, we, we from the, we from the '80s and the '90s. I'm from, you know, I'm from that era, man. And the level of violence, I put it like this: they don't have, at least from my perception, and, and the limited times I've been there. The last time I was there is in February. I was spent, I spent um, almost three weeks there in February, and uh, end of January, early February. Um, the, the level of, of, of crime and violence that we have, um, it, it's not it's not the same thing. You know what I mean? And uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with the it's still it, it still got religious beliefs and and notions of structure and all that kind of stuff that are still in place that kind of buffer 
them from going, you know, kind of mm-hmm. crazy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you don't mm-hmm. have this kind of. I, I didn't. I didn't perceive like real hardcore gangsterism. You know what right. I mean? And right, right, right. People will tell you. People will tell you. you know, it's not safe to go here at night. It's not safe to go there. Yes. Be careful about this and be careful mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. But and, and that's just like you know everywhere. But I. I didn't get the sense that they they're at a place where like crime is out of control. You right. Know what I mean, and, and violence is out of control. And it's like all in the news all the time. And it's like so despite a, being in poverty, they they still didn't. Yeah, didn't yeah, see. yeah, yeah. And um so that's that's kind of what you know what I got, you know, you know, unlike other parts of the developing world where criminal activity street level criminal activity can overwhelm, overwhelm the government you know right. what i mean so it's right. like if you're talking about parts of south america you know G- colombia and brazil mexico. you know and yeah. mexico where mm-hmm. cartels basically you know are a major threat to the government you know what right. i mean i didn't get that kind of sense that things is, have gotten that bad you mm-hmm. know there you know what i mean because mm-hmm. in, in, in general you know, most people live modestly. In general, most people don't have lots of money. Right. They uh, they poor. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. Let me let me ask you, um, as a, a academic, um, you know, I, I was watching this video on, on YouTube, and um, it was how how to make a rich country, how to make a poor country rich. That's a big topic. I like to look at. And one of the things that the man said is uh, it was very controversial. He caught a lot of slack for it. He was a PhD in economics. He said most developing countries, if they want to get rich, they need to invest heavily in the educational status of their men. Okay. Now that is, that is quite interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm living here. Uh, I know you heard about the Africa free trade agreement um, and trying to pull women into uh, the, the 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 cross border trades and things like that on the borders, getting which I understand that's a that, that's a need because you don't want the women to be in poverty. But you're seeing so much in the world, um, not so much as developing the men into the society into the business like before, and let's put the women and in, in their needs first. And when I'm looking at these countries that are actually taking over. In certain parts of Africa, China, you know, you see a lot of uh, men's coming from, uh, you know, the Lebanese and, and West Africa. They're never sending their women to, to, to come and be competitive. They're sending their men to do these things and they're dominating over other groups of of men in those particular countries. Um, now, how do you feel about and, and so and as far as countries like Gambia? Or even in Black America, the the empowerment of the African man or, or or Black men in general, to what what outcome would we start to see if we if 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 these societies start producing more successful, more educated men in these societies? What would you what what would the Gambia Senegal what would Black America look like from your perspective? And you know, as you've seen both sides of the world. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think definitely it would uh, it would decrease poverty. It would definitely decrease poverty uh, among men. Uh, it would it would decrease crime in particular. You know what I mean? And uh, and I think what happens is that you know men need you know um, constructive outlets for what is just basically natural. You know what I mean? Natural impulses and what have you, aggression. Um, just testosterone and all of that. Um, you know, men, there's a, we have a natural natural impulse to build. You know what I mean? We have a natural kind of impulse to, when, especially when it comes down to money, to do things with money that, you know, that women, women don't do, you know? And, uh, and I think that um, men tend to be a little bit more pragmatic when it comes down to things because men, we, I mean, typically we have people who are connected to us we're thinking about kind of long-term things. We're not always, not always, but I'm in the broad spectrum of things, mm-hmm. kind of um, delayed gratification, yes. planning, that That's sort true. of thing. You know what I'm saying? 
we our interests are very different. You know what I mean? And uh, more more men are more interested in business and finance and making money, things that make society run. You know, and so I think that you know if Western societies were really serious, because we've already tried it. Here's the thing: in the West, we've already tried, and we have not really succeeded with focusing you know exclusively on women you know what i mean because the belief was that if you educate the woman and if you empower the woman that's going to trickle down and empower everybody else Mm -hmm. and the reality is that that has not been the case okay Mm -hmm. it hasn't been the case and and there and so what happens is you have western companies right now you know kamala harris she was just in africa um Mm -hmm. not too long ago you know Mm -hmm. and uh, talking to uh, you know, people in Ghana and what have you, mm-hmm. and uh, and she has been pushing because there, you know, corporations, you know, they they they're wanting to do stuff, you know, for women in Africa and everything, and it's not necessarily wrong with that. You want to you want to look at what it is that they, that they want to do because oftentimes here, here's the thing, oftentimes those measures are just used as kind of a backdoor means to. Um, double down on the type of colonial control of those countries. You know, what mm-hmm. I mean? so, so if you control, if you if you get control of the women and everything like that, um, you can control the society. You know, and uh, and but but you're controlling so, the society for somebody else's interests other than the women from those countries. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and so yeah, there's there's always been this reluctance in terms of investing. You know, in, in in men, because men, you know, uh, just just in, in in general, you know, they're going to be trying to, you know, be independent. You know what I mean? And, and and to create something that's kind of you know sovereign, you know, and autonomous and everything. Um, but I do think to your your your, your question, um, it would it would eliminate a lot of social problems a lot of social problems especially if you if you deal with it at the earliest stages when they're boys mm-hmm. um when they're when, in, when they're youth and when they're young men um mm-hmm. you know because that's where everything begins you know mm-hmm. right there man and, and, and the thing about what i what i discovered is that you got guys and I, i'm thinking of a conversation that i had right now i mean I, I was talking to a guy um you know who works i mean you got guys who have just just they they are busting their butts for pennies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Those guys, the, the drive that they have, some of the guys I met, you know what I mean? But they just don't have the opportunity. They don't have mm-hmm. the opportunity. They don't have the right institutions mm-hmm. um, to, to shape and develop them. And mm-hmm. I'm like, guy, I'm like, I'm like, if I if you were able to come to America, you would, you would, you would, you, you would, would be killing. Well. You would be killing. Right. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You know, and uh, he's got young in their twenties, man. You know, I mean, I'm. I was talking to a guy, my young guy, um, come from a very solid family, and you know, he goes to work. He's you know, twenty three years old, man. Five o'clock in the morning, doesn't get home to like six o'clock at night. You know what I mean? And uh, just working, man. You know, and, and doing, you know, uh, building, doing construction work. You know what I mean? And doesn't have any type of certifications, no high school stuff, smart, not a dumb person, you know. Um, but you know, take care he takes care of himself and he really wants to make money. And I, when I was talking to him, all he could he was just he just infatuated with America. Just America and America and mm-hmm. America. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, you drop this you drop this guy in the right right place in the United States. Mm-hmm. He gonna kill it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of thing you're dealing with, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the other side of it. Again, they've created a situation where just you have men who are, and I think based on their family situations, man, they've been they've been destroyed by the poverty. They've been destroyed by it. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, you grow up. You know, if you grow up and you in poverty and your family is fractured and you don't have a lot of direction that destroys aspiration and ambition and any type of you know visioning that you would have you know and so that's the that's the other extreme of it right there you know what i mean and uh and 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 that's where you see some of the the criminal element and everything you know 
Um, you know, they, they were destroyed at an early age, you know. Um, but like I was saying, man, you got you got guys that are there who if you if you put them in any Western country, particularly America, America in particular, they would excel. Let me let me let me get back to um actually two of the points. You said that men typically spend money uh on things that some women won't. Now, what do you mean when you say that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so in terms of you know, you know, I, I, you know, I'm talking about property. We're talking about assets. Um, you know, so, so thing about female consumptive behavior, man. You have you have the fashion. Um, you got the luxury stuff. You know, you have the girly girl stuff. Um, just just stuff that stuff that didn't build value. I'll put it like this. You know what I mean? And so, you know, you know, there's a tendency for women all over the world to be consumers, you know, especially okay. if they've been exposed to Western society. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, um, and you know, you have some conspicuous consumption among men, but mm-hmm. that's not necessarily what drives us. You know what I mean? Cause, mm-hmm. and, and I think what happens is that, like, in that part of, you know, what I guess West Africa and they probably... I think it might be universal, man. You know, um, these guys know, guys know if they want respect in their society, if you want respect in your society, you have to have something. You know, you have to own something. Um, you, you have to, you know, um, um, have some equity, have some real estate. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that's why, you know, in, in, in Africa, I'm mean, like, there's a big emphasis like on tech. One thing I saw in Gambia, man, there's a lot, and you, I know you see it where you are, man, in East Africa and everything. And I know it's all over the place, man. Just just a big emphasis on tech, man, you know. And I was having a conversation with somebody. I'm like, man, if I wanted to be a, a, a tech entrepreneur, if I was somebody who wanted to invest in tech uh, industries, man, I would, I would go to Africa, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, it's just so big, you know, and... And, and and I see a lot of guys in that tech realm, you know what I mean, with the with the with the phones and just um, all type of you know digital technologies and what have you. And that's what builds asset. That's what builds wealth. That's what makes money. So that's the thing. They're very pragmatic. What I what I get is, you know, the, the guys um, just in general tend to be very pragmatic about. Um, how to spend money? It's clear. If you want to, if you want to live a good life, you know what I mean. Land, property, that's how you do it. You know. Then you have, you know, you have the entertainment, the tourist stuff, and what have you. And then beyond that, you've got tech. You have resources. Um, you know, you got the farming, uh, cattle, and all that kind of stuff. You know, those things that 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 that, that make money. So there's a different there's a different kind of mentality that you have with men versus mm-hmm. women. Okay. So let me ask you also, because you talked about, we need to get these men young. Yeah. And, and, I, and I know this also in black America, we don't create the young men or women that will come in and solve our problems that will come in and, um, and create the economic opportunity that would be customized. Something that they would understand for our community. And you also see, that is definitely, the, I mean, in Uganda, I believe that's definitely the case. So, you know, the young people are not taught. These are your people that you need to work with. You need to have some level of teamwork and transparency in the business. This is how you need to improve it or solve problems for your people and reinvest into your people. Other groups do that. Uh, Jewish people, Indians, people do it. So when you said get these people young and take them up through teenagers into adult men. What is the guidelines that these people should be taught as young men in the Gambia or even black in America that they can, they can know how to empower their communities or, 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 or their, their cities or countries to build these things that will help sustain development for the, for their communities. Yeah. 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 I think that the, 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 the big thing is um, you have to develop at a basic level impulse control with young men, and uh, and what I mean by that is that um, you have to have 
early on, and this is this is the importance the importance of fathers and father, father guidance, the male figures, um, um, people who are going to in a, in a constructive way help these young men kind of con- you know ch- channel the kind of natural energy you know that they have because if they don't do it you know they would destroy themselves and they would destroy you know um people around them fortunately you know in 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 those countries you know religion is still a thing they have not they are not as um impacted by secularism as the west is america is in particular um and so that's that that's a good thing you know what i mean um like in gambia um and you know i I visited the, the mosques you know on numerous occasions and what have you and uh and and they do they do have that um that kind of helps keeps these guys you know disciplined and they, they, they learn boundaries and everything um but you need more you need more again and, and that's where the skills come in and the education uh comes in you know and um and you have to so here's the thing man um they have a kind of a similar problem that we have in that the girls are pushed into school. They push the girls into school um, over the boys, you know. And so the universities there, um, the University of Gambia, I mean, it's predominantly female, you know. And uh, and they still have this idea that men, you know, you know, only it's only with our hands that we kind of, you know, produce value in the world. You know what I mean? And uh, and we have to kind of in those countries and even in the U.S. got to got to got to move beyond that. You know what I mean? And so in terms of you know you know you're a STEM guy, man. The STEM thing is very important. You know, science, math, you know, technology, engineering, and all that kind of stuff. We can't get around those things, man. And it has to be done at an early age. And, and yes, it's good for guys to have traditional skills to be able to build a house, to be able to repair a house to be able to repair a roof, those are invaluable skills, you know, to be able to to fix cars and all those things, you know, those kind of working class skills um, that will always be needed, okay? Um, But you also, you also want to have, you know, um, you know, more sophisticated skills um, that you can apply to other arenas. Again, you know, like technology and to the world of finance and business and so the governments, and this is where the governments come in. The governments have to be intentional. They have to be intentional in seeing, in, in investing in these men, and being and seeing men as, as valuable, um, and understanding that the future of their societies depends on what they do with the men. Okay, um, and, and I'm gonna tell you. So the, the her name is, is Nigerian woman. Um, I can't think of, I have a hard time pronouncing her name. She was the, the former president of the African Union, a Nigerian woman, and uh, very, very popular. Um, I think her name was Arinkola uh, Jimandana, something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and she talked about that before she left the African Union, because she was talking about Nigeria mm-hmm. and talking about the problem of what's going on in Nigeria and that you have an overabundance of underdeveloped men in Nigeria. And that, you know, the Nigerian, in terms of the upper echelons of Nigerian society, in the middle to the upper echelons, they're doing a decent, a very good job with educating women. But you got a whole bunch of young young guys, young boys, okay, who are not being educated. And, um, and a lot of times, here's what happens. They're being exploited. When they do work, they're being exploited, you know, in, in, in the mines. They're being exploited, you know, during the dangerous work stuff that gets mm-hmm. you killed <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. looking for the the coal for the 5g stuff you know what i mean like mm-hmm. you're doing the congo you know mm-hmm. and um uh, and we have to we have to have a more sophisticated idea of what men can do it so so basically we have a very primitive understanding of men's mm-hmm. capacities mm-hmm. it's like a caveman it's like a caveman understanding of what a man can do Mm-hmm. And his whole whole existence in the world. So it's like women can live in the 21st century in 2023 and be exposed to all this education that makes them quote unquote modern. 
but we got to keep men back in prehistoric times. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> That's the kind of dynamic that we're dealing with. And unfortunately, what's different between us and America is that, and this is what makes it, you know, sad, and, and it makes it makes me mad in particular, is that these are countries that are ran by men, okay? The presidents of men, the governments, <laughs> male governments. So you got these old guys who, you know, in these parliaments or whatever and making all these decisions and they live well, you know what I mean? And they've got multiple wives. They live, you know, big compounds and all that kind of stuff, you know. But seemingly, when it comes to the, the generations who are coming up, you know, who don't have the type of opportunity that these guys have had, it's like, we just write them off. You know what I mean? And and let them fend for themselves, man. And uh, and that's the situation. So in the U.S., we have the, the high-level white people who are making all these decisions who are like, the hell with men, <laughs> especially black men. <laughs> but in, you know, uh, the context of Africa in these countries, you've got these presidents who are in their 70s and late 60s and early 80s who have the same mentality. I see, I see, I see. Okay, I didn't think about it like that, but that's definitely true. I've seen it also um, in, in my places there and around Africa, which is obviously is more opportunity in America, but I definitely see that there is a under the development of the men that have the opportunity to work and just not getting the opportunities to do so. But I do thank you, uh, Dr. Neil, for coming on and, and expressing uh, these things in, in a way that nobody's probably ever talked about it before. Because I remember we did this video on Nagami and you commented on the video, which yeah. made me think about bringing together the issues of the diaspora that we're seeing in a systemic fashion yeah. and w- such we can make correlations between these two concepts. And I'm so glad you're able to do that based on your personal experience. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's the thing. I, I, I need to say this, man. So even when, with the Gambia and what people talk about, man, um, you know, the, the larger issue is economics, man. It is economics, you know? And what, what guys find themselves, you know, kind of, you know, forced to do you know, based on the situation that their countries are in and the lack of opportunity that, you know, is, is afforded to them. You know what I mean? And, 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 uh, and I share with you probably, man, I, I mean, the desperation is, is so, so deep, man. You know what I mean? When you have these guys, again, like I told you, man, you got a guy that looks like a, you know, a Richard Sherman and I'm like, you would think, that there, be, there would be some type of industry for this guy to thrive in, right? But he's around here with these decrepit, rich, you know, white women holding their hands, kissing on them and what have you, um, sleeping with them, you know, for money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, because the economic situation is of such where this is one of the few opportunities that he can do, he can make a living, you know, Without going to jail, <laughs> so it's a it's it's a, it's a real thing, man. It's it's a real thing. They talk about the women, um, and, and what you know, women deal with. But man, it's it's it's, it's much broader and more more complicated than that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Doc, is, 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 go ahead and, and tell them what they can find on your channel or what, what your channel is about and all that stuff. Yeah, you, you guys just just find me, uh, Ronald Neal, right here on, on YouTube. And, you know, my moniker is the man professor. You know, that's that's what I go by. And uh, not hard to find, you know. And, and again, as I said at the beginning, my channel is about the empowerment uh, of black men, you can find me on Instagram, Ronald Neal. Instagram, uh, hit me up there. Um, I'm not on Facebook too much these days, but I'm on Facebook as well. Uh, but uh, I'm not hard to find. So, so, uh, so, search me, search for me here on YouTube. All right, I'll put the link there at the top of the uh, pin to the top. And Doc, thank you for such a a, a great. Um, breakdown of this it was, it was it was a classic much better than i would have been able to do that's why you get paid the big bucks as a professor 
So uh, and thank you ooh. and thank you, O'Shea. We've been meaning to do this for a long time. I want to thank O'Shea for his generosity and kindness for entertaining me here. Um, this has been a long time coming, and uh, you know, you know, I, I've been rocking with you, man, uh, since 2015, bro. And so, you know, right. still with you, man. <laughs> yeah, we're glad to have you. And uh, again, uh, uh, doctor, doctor will be in this part of Africa, so hopefully, we'll get a chance to. Uh, be able to see him and, and everything. So, guys, it is two thirty nine a.m. I got to drink. Uh, you know, I, I got to, 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 to. Well, I tell you what I'm be doing in my dreams. But uh, thank you so much, and and uh, peace out. Peace out. All right.